bear witness to this awful victory. Oh. The triplex locomotive. Three sets. Three sets of driving wheels. So much untapped power. And yes, this was a thing. This was totally a thing that that was done. And it didn't it didn't go super well. <laughs> but it was pretty cool. A triplex locomotive just refers to a type of steam locomotive that uses three sets of driving wheels, each with their own set of cylinders. Obviously, they're a small step up from something like a Malay or a simple articulate, but they have extra power because that was really necessary. But we didn't see this very often. And in fact, we only ever saw it twice in history. We only ever attempted it here in America, and both times were complete failures. Well, not complete failures. They did find some use for them, but their utility overall was really, really, really disappointing. All the models of Triplex were built by Baldwin. Also, uh, before I continue, someone was probably going to mention, actually, actually, it's pronounced Triplex. To which I will say, I don't care. I'm calling it Triplex. Try means three. Fight me. Anyway, Baldwin built all of them. And in total, there were four different ones built. Three were technically the same model and went to the Erie Railroad, and one other was built later for the Virginian. The Erie ones did come into existence first, with the original being constructed in 1914. She was technically a Malay, as she was a compound locomotive, but not a Malay in the sense of having two sets of drivers. She had, she had three, but she was a compound. A 2888 two, number 5014. She would later get two sisters in the form of 5015 and 5016. She had a massive, massive boiler because they knew they had to feed a lot of steam to these cylinders to make them work effectively. And the high pressure cylinders were actually in the center. The right hand high pressure cylinder led forward to those low pressure cylinders, while the left hand high pressure cylinder went backwards to the low pressure cylinders in the rear underneath the tender. And yes, technically these were powered tender units, but they weren't interchangeable. You couldn't like take the tender off without ruining everything. Uh, I mean, it's, it was kind of integral to their function. So technically <laughs> that would make these tank engines which is just a weird thought, um, but yeah. And of course they were articulated because how could they not be? That, 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 that wheelbase would be impossible if they weren't. Though, deceptively, they weren't as long as you'd think. They were actually in line with other simple articulates and malaise. This is because the extra drivers were on the tender. So, technically they weren't any longer than, you know, not triplexes, just because, well, they just stuck extra drivers on the tender that would be there otherwise anyway. But, as I mentioned at the start, this design didn't really take off, and it definitely didn't for Erie, because it was found that these engines just weren't really that useful, despite giving them exceedingly large boilers to make sure they could feed enough steam to the cylinders, it still wasn't enough. They struggled to work up enough steam to do anything substantial, and they could only go 10 miles per hour. 10. That was it. Part of the problem had to do with the exhaust draft. See, a lot of engines recycle the exhaust draft in order to retain steam, which is fine. Except while the cylinders in the front did do that, the ones in the back under the tender did not. Meaning that these engines were pretty much always short of steam and just always exhausted. But when they were working, they were slow, yes, but very, very alarmingly powerful. Attractive effort appears to have been about, oh, you know, 160,000 pounds of force. What? In 1914? That's horrifying, actually. That's insane. That's more than a big boy. And big boys wouldn't come around until much later. I mean, goodness. 
And that was the other problem. They had trouble pulling stuff, not, not because they couldn't do it, but because they were so powerful, they often broke the couplers. So, the only use Eerie found for them was banking. They were placed on the Susquehanna Incline, replacing some older locomotives that were being used in pusher service. And the railway used them to help other trains up the hill. Which, in fairness, they were really good at that, because they could push quite well, for obvious reasons. And that meant they lasted a lot longer than you'd think. They weren't retired until about 1930. By that point, their inefficiencies were becoming quite obvious. They were very expensive to run and maintain. And newer, more powerful engines are coming to the fold that didn't require uh, any of what's going on here. But as I mentioned, there was another model of Triplex beyond the Erie 3. That was over on the Virginia, and she was known as the XA. She was an only child, never had any sisters, and she was designed to be an improvement off of the Erie's version, but she actually wound up worse in some categories. They changed her wheel arrangement slightly. She was a 28884, because they gave her a longer tender for more fuel, which was probably a good call, and she had an even larger boiler to give her more steam which still didn't give her enough steam. She still struggled to feed her cylinders. She also suffered from steam leaks in the stuffing boxes of the tender cylinder. And she was even slower than the Eeries had been. She could only hit five miles per hour. Five! Which is just kind of pathetic. She was still tremendously powerful, slightly weaker than the Eeries at 146,000 pounds of force for tractive effort. Still insane, but again, at what cost? And the answer was a lot of cost, because she was expensive to run and couldn't do much of anything beyond, again, banking. The XA did not last nearly as long as the Eeries did. She was returned to Baldwin pretty quick because the Virginian just didn't have enough use for her, and she was flawed in many categories. In her case, she wasn't scrapped, at least not immediately, because she was actually rebuilt into two different locomotives. A Class MD-282, numbered 410, and a Class AF-2880, numbered 610. Those two locomotives lasted until 1953, though from what I understand, they were both scrapped. So, yeah, all the triplexes and any locomotives associated are long since gone. And no one else attempted to do this, because... Because, because, no. Well, I say that, technically, Alco did propose a triplex design to the Chesapeake and Ohio. Theirs was supposed to be a 26682, but the CNO was like, yeah, um, no? So Alco was like, oh, okay, fine, you're no fun. And many point to the other flaw, that even if they got the steam problem sorted out, they would still suffer from a diminished tractive effort as they used water and coal because... Well, they had power tenders. And while that is true, in their case, that was kind of irrelevant. Because remember, they used the Eries for pushing service. Where there were water and coal stops right next to where they were sitting. So, And some have argued that there are other changes they probably could have made to make them actually work. And yeah, you're probably right. I think this was an underdeveloped technology in its way. They probably could have made changes, alterations, and improvements that would have resulted in a triplex that was genuinely functional, that could actually go at a decent speed, and maybe used for something other than, say, pushing things. On the other hand, why though? <laughs> because these things offered such a tremendous amount of <laughs> in their day that it was just woefully unneeded. Like, yes, yes, you have all this tract of effort, but why though? You don't need that much. There just was, it, it was just woefully unnecessary for an engine to produce that much power. Maybe in the modern day it might make more sense because trains are really long now, but back in the early 1900s, that wasn't as much of an issue. And even as trains increased in size, we had simple articulates, which got pretty big on their own. But adding that extra set of drivers on top of it, it was like, okay, that's we, 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 we can stop. We can stop. Which didn't stop the belts from making their quadruplex, but that's an entirely separate story, and we're not going to go into it right now. Till next time, this is Darkness, and I bid you all a fond farewell. <laughs>